What's up you guys, welcome to the channel. Here I want to show you how you can create applications without coding skills. You might have this issue that you want to create something but you don't know where to start. This is the channel to learn about it. Today I want to talk about Google Sheets. You know Google Sheets, right? You have a lot of data in there. Sometimes you even share it with people but they end up destroying it and it's a pain, right? Today I want to show you a method on how you can put an application on top of your Google Sheet which allows people to only edit what you allow them to edit. So let's dive into it right now. Today we're going to be building an expenses tracking application. We're going to use Glide Apps for that, which is able to connect to a Google Sheet like this one here. And it creates a mobile application that you can send off to your users and they can log in and make photos of their receipts, put in the money amount, the date, and save it. They will not have access to other people's data, but they do have access to their own receipts. They can edit, they can send new ones, but you have full control of the sheet and you can always see who sent what, and uh, you can make sure that the data is always consistent and nobody can break your sheet. So let's get to it. So first of all, coffee time. Get some energy before we start right okay so in order to get started here we need to create a new app on glide apps we already have one here but let me show you how you would create one so simply wait for this to load select one of your google sheets that you prepared and uh, select it and glide will create an app that looks like this as you can see it imported the data already. I will show you in a minute how it looks like, but basically it has the same ordering as here. It has the same data. So let's look at the data, the way that Glide Apps interprets it. You can see it looks exactly the same within Glide. Also the users, actually, yeah, the users look the same. And what are the users actually? Well, those are users that can log into this app. I will show you in a minute. And why is this important uh, that Glide in interprets this data and, and keeps it in sync with the Google Sheet? Well, because in Glide you can add more columns and you can add specific columns like columns for images or for, for email addresses and it will take care that they are formatted properly so the user cannot mess up the format of the data. So this is exactly what we need. Uh, but you can see in the app already now that um, basically you can see all the data from other users as well. You can see um, data from user 3, user, uh, this uh, no-code user and so on. But how about uh, if, we, if we want to see only the data of the user that we are logged in with? And this is the first, the first magic that Glide is doing. So you can choose a column that represents the logged in user. And the logged in user is, is this thing where you can choose to preview the application as someone from your user list. And if I go here and I say, based on the email address, make this a row owner, which means that if I'm logged in, if I'm logged in, then I can only see the rows that belong to that exact same email address that is logged in. So if I go now to the tabs, I can see only the no code entries. That's already pretty nice because I'm not able to see other colleagues entries. If I log in as someone else, then I can see only that user's entries. So that's already huge, guys, right? Because now I can make sure that when I send this app to a user, they have to log in and I will show you how to do that. And they can see only their own record. So this is already massive improvement compared to a normal Google Sheet uh, when you give access to, to it to other people. So how do we tell Glide who is allowed to log in? Well, in settings, there is a sign in feature, and I chose to allow users only if they are part of this users tab that I created here in, uh, in my Google Sheet. And I put all the email addresses of all the people that are allowed to log in at all. And how that works is they put in the email, and I will show you later when we go through the app. They get an email address with a pin code, they put the pin code, and they are inside. The reason for that is Glide wants to make sure that this email address that wants to log in truly belongs to that person. So they have to open that email that they received and copy this code and put it there. It's a six digit code, I think. 
This is a pro feature that I chose here, allowed email list. You can also choose um, to make the app completely public, but for our use case, and we imagine it being used inside of a company or a, any kind of organization, there are most likely uh, a list of users that are allowed and nothing more. So this is what I chose here. And I chose to create this tab for users because it's a very nice way, a clean way to represent all of the users that are allowed to log in. So I also gave them a first name, a last name. You don't have to do that if it's just for login purposes. But what happens now is that if a user with if the user six logs in, but user six never had any record here, no problem. They can log in because they are part of this sheet. They can then go ahead and add their expenses here. And I will show you how to do that in the next section. Yeah, I'm addicted, guys. So now let's make this look more like an expenses application, right? So what would I expect here as a user when I log in? Uh, well, I want to see the photo of my receipt. I want to see the amount and when I spent it. So let's choose maybe a different way of representing this data. Yeah, this looks great. This looks great. Of course, instead of this big uh, euros number here I want to show a picture which will come up soon and also the email address of myself don't really have to see that right because I know who I am so let's choose the the date and the image well we don't have an image yet so let's pimp this by adding an image so how do we do that well because it's an image and that image has to be uploaded and then hosted somewhere we have to do it through glide and we add a new column in the right tab, in the expenses tab, and we call it receipt photo. And we choose a basic color, and it's an image. That's it. Now it has been created also on my Google Sheet, which is pretty nice. Now, still no image because we didn't upload one yet. So let's tell Glide to allow the user to upload something because for now they cannot. They can just look at it. Uh, and edit it maybe even, yeah, but they cannot yet add anything. So here is a feature for that. Add, allow users to add items, sweet. So Glide is pretty smart. It already de detected most of the fields that we need, um, the amount, which is a number, uh, detected it as a number. If it wasn't there, I would choose it from here. Number entry, and it will look exactly like this. And whenever a user puts in a value, then it has to be saved into the amounts column, which is this one. Makes a lot of sense. And for the date, we have exactly the same. It goes to the receipt date. And it's a date field. And the same. You click here, you can just search for date. And they also have date time. But in this case, we don't care about the exact time. We just care about the date itself. And let's delete this special value so I can explain to you what it means. Let's add the photo, right? Because that's why we came here. So I will add an image picker, which is required. All of those are. And the title is received photo. And that's it. So let's try it out. Okay, there it is. So adding it. We'll add it to our Google Sheet as well and doesn't appear here. Why doesn't it appear on my app? Well, that's the magic field that I deleted before so I can show you what it means. So it did add it, right? And it's there and even the photo is there, right? That's great, but it doesn't have an owner. So because it doesn't have an owner and I'm logged in as a user and there is a row owner set here, well, doesn't work, right? Kind of expected. So if I would add this email here manually, then of course that data would appear and it would be shown on the bottom here. And by the way, let's make it look much better now with with a photo. Right? But it wasn't like that, so let's undo this. And basically that's this record is kind of a a bug, right? Because it doesn't belong to any user and that's impossible, right? The receipt must belong to somebody. Otherwise, why would they have uploaded it at all? Let's change something to make this work much better. So adding, so we need to add a new field here 
that is hidden but will be saved into column A for the logged in user. So it's this field here, special values, user's email. So it's like user's email address will be saved into the email column. Glide is really smart automatically picking the right column. So when we do this again, you will see that another line will appear, but then it will have an email address in there. So let's try this. All right, you can see that immediately came into the app and also correctly arrived in my Google Sheet. Let's give this record to a user so that it's all clean. Once in a while, you might want to synchronize the sheet with Glide, uh, especially if you made changes in the sheet and you want them to be reflected very quickly in your application. Otherwise, Glide will, of course, fetch the data periodically as well. Okay, pretty good. If I click on one, it still looks pretty boring, right? So let's change it. Adding a photo here, an image, and there you go. Perfect. It says when it was taken, what amount it was, and the photo. What if I made a mistake when entering my receipt? For example, here it says it's 9.22, let's pretend it's euros, and I wanna edit it, right? Well, Glide already created some fields here, and that's cool, but, right, that's fine. But what if I want to change the image itself? Let's do this. I would add another field as an image picker. And you see that it's already containing the current image, but it's pretty small and it's really just an image picker. So let's show the big version of the image as well. All right, cool. There is one final touch we need to make to this because if I delete this one here, then the big one is still there and that's a bit inconsistent. So let's make a change to this image on the bottom to hide it whenever this one is empty as well. So going back to, so, so you see where we are. So I'm, cli I'm clicking on this image. I'm deciding on when to visualize this image at all. So I'm saying visualize it only when receipt photo, which is here, is not empty, right? So show component, this one, when receipt photo, this one, is not empty. So it's not empty, so it's shown. If I delete this one, then this one will also disappear and it looks much better. I'm sorry guys, I need a lot of coffee today. Let's check it out and upload a different photo. Yeah, let's take this one, 16.5. Waiting for it to upload, done, cool. Now, the rest of the records look a bit boring because they don't have any receipt uploaded to them, so let's do it now. Okay, sweet. Pretty cool. As you have seen, while I was changing those images, they were appearing here in the Google Sheet. Everything was up to date and synchronized. And that is great. This is exactly what we need. So I think the expenses are already pretty good. We can do everything we want to do. But what if I created an expense that I didn't want to create at all and I want to delete it? So there is a feature, it's already turned on. Let me show you where you could do this. In the edit screen, you can choose to allow to delete uh, records. And you can even choose conditions when this is allowed. But for now, this is always allowed if you are logged in and you can see records only when you're logged in, which is exactly what we want. You can then click this button and Glide will do everything automatically. So 222, we expect this line to have some kind of change happening to it. So let's see. Yep, Glide was just deleting the entries in there. It didn't remove the whole line and that is expected behavior and it's actually good for not destroying your, your other logic in the sheet. All right, I'm pretty happy with the app already, but I would like to add another tab to have basically two tabs. One is for expenses and the other one is for a personal summary of how much I spent as a user in total. So let's create another tab. We go to the tabs feature here. 
and we create another tab. We call it me and we choose the users tab from the Google Sheet to be the, the underlying data for this tab. Okay, let's choose some better image here. Okay, great. Go back to the layout and now let's decide on how we make this look like. So you remember, we chose the users tab as the underlying data, which is why it now shows one record, which is exactly my user account. Well, this is pretty boring. So we want to show something very different because this tab is not a list because uh, I'm just one person, but it's actually a summary. So there is a feature for that. It's called detail screen. And this data is not necessary. So we can now add elements to it to make it look a bit better. What I want to do now is I want to add a chart. And that chart takes its data from expenses. And well, if you remember, I'm logged in as this person, right? So any data I would see must belong to that user. So that's why you already see three records only that belong here, but let's change how it's displaying the data. And you can see immediately that if I choose amount for the label and the quantity, then I can see a very nice summary of my expenses here in the app. Let's see if that's correct, but of course it is. The summary, yes, it is perfectly fine. All right, so we have two tabs now. By the way, this icon is not the best in the world. Let's choose, let's choose a money pile instead. Much better. So that is great, but I want to show you a bit more possibilities in Glide. Let's say that this user has a budget and that user should see the budget that they have and should also see how much is left of it. How would we do this? So there are two options. You can, of course, create all these fields here in Google Sheets and calculate it with VLOOKUPs and sums and minuses. That's cool. Um, the only downside doing this is basically that it takes a little bit to synchronize back to, to Glide. So it might look a bit awkward to the user when creating a new entry, then these calculations that happen in the Google Sheet will synchronize, but not immediately. So it is a bit of a, of a delay there. So instead, if you can, and whenever you can, you should create those columns and those calculations in Glide itself and uh, display them display them in the app. So first of all, we create a column for budget. And that column will be a number and it will be represented as euros as well. And that's cool. I'm putting a budget of 5K here and of 3K and, and so on. And I'm formatting this as euros. I'm synchronizing the data just to be sure everything works fine. Perfect. Now let's show that in the app. Choosing an action text because I can give it a title. Maybe call it total budget. And I'm taking budget as a number. Okay, uh, maybe put it above the chart. Pretty cool, that was easy. But now, how can we subtract this number from the budget and show the remaining budget? Also, I would recommend doing this within Glide itself. Okay, so in order to do that, we create a new column to sum up the, the total spent of the user. Because we need to do calculation. We need to do basically this minus that. So first of all, uh, summary of total spent, which is a roll up and it takes its data from expenses and it sums up, here, sums up, amount. And this might look a bit awkward because it's in every line, but because the user only has access to his own line and Glide, uh, Glide sees the app in, in just one user's, from one user's perspective, you can see that when I change the user, um, also the amount changes. So it's always gonna be correct when the user logs in and looks at their own data. Okay, and now I need to create another column, the final column, remaining budget. Remaining budget will be a calculation between budget minus spent. 
and those are placeholders and here basically Glide is pretty smart right um, <laughs> so what happens is that Glide uh, replaces this placeholder with the actual budget number and this placeholder with the uh, actual spent number so what remains is the difference between those two so now the data is available and we can add it here in layout to our tab let's do that now Ta -da! okay so that was fast we created an app in a few minutes where you can upload your receipts you can edit them you can see them you can make sure that the data is correct and you even have a summary of your spendings and budgets and remaining so that's pretty nice already so let's load this app onto the phone first of all click on share and give your app a name and copy this URL once you have the URL let's move over to the phone and type it in there so glide asks us to install this app as a home screen so let's do that because then it looks more like a like a native application so what happens is that it creates an icon over here you click on the app and then it asks you to log in of course right so i'm typing in our one of our users from the google sheet okay now i have to type in the pin code which i'm gonna fetch from my computer cool once i'm signed in i can see all of these records that you are familiar with from the tutorial you can see i already uploaded some of them and i can see my summaries tab pretty nice so let's add a new receipt from a spending that i just made yesterday okay let's add the amount And there you go. Guys, it was a pleasure to show you today how to build this super simple application for expense tracking. As you know, the whole channel is about empowering you to build your own applications by showing you tools and tips and tricks on how to do that without coding skills. It was a lot of fun creating this video for you guys. If you have more questions about Glide or any other application or any tool, comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to hear about. Smash the like button and catch you in the next one.